Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be your pick a card reading for Aquarius season uh, 2020. And although I'm using this kind of date to anchor the reading, uh, all my readings are intended to be timeless. So if you happen to sync up with this reading uh, at a later date, uh, it's for you. And just before we jump into the four particular piles, uh, I did pull or rather one of these uh, divine animal oracle cards wanted to come out and be kind of an overall theme uh, for the next coming month or so. And what we got was the sacred Ebis, if that's how you pronounce this bird's name. And I loved this since it's uh, card number 22 and 22 is my favorite number. Uh, like ever since I was a little kid, I, I always had a thing for, for 22. And, you know, we have these birds, uh, which in Egypt symbolized uh, you know, wisdom and learning and it, you could invoke their magic in order to um, bring more knowledge to you both from using resources around you and from gaining your own inner wisdom and you know we have these uh this these birds looking into these doors which totally reminds me of the doors of perception um, you know if you're into Huxley or you know the doors, the band, <laughs> uh, then you know what I'm talking about. So I, I feel like this is a reminder that we can uh, we'll continue to learn more and, you know, through gaining knowledge, uh, cultivating our wisdom by kind of being willing to open our doors of perception and look out into, look out through windows that we've never, not only have we never looked out them before, we didn't even know they were there. That's what this card is uh, reminding me of. So... With that in mind, uh, we're going to get right into the readings, and it's just going to be down in the description box. You'll see uh, timestamps for top left, top right, uh, bottom left, and bottom right, and I'll see you there. Okay, this was the pile on the top left, and um, I had to kind of cram in here the Celtic cross here, so, you know, we have the usual spread. Uh, this is the kind of ultimate, ultimate outcome card, and... Actually, when I sat down to read this morning, I didn't even, I wasn't planning on doing the Celtic Cross, and when it occurred to me <laughs> to do it, uh, I had the idea to use these moon cards as the central issue, um, which I've never done before, uh, but I really liked the idea of it as soon as it uh, presented itself to me. So <laughs> we're going to see how this goes. Um, your central issue for Aquarius season is going to be don't let your past hold you back. South node. And the challenge to what might be holding you back, uh, the, the crossing card here is the Seven of Wands. Um, and man, this whole spread is, is re really like high frequency. Uh, I really feel like you, uh, you guys are have been evolving really rapidly lately. Uh, that you're already quite, um, that you've been getting different areas of your life all coming together, uh, like different streams all coming into a river. Um, and let me try to explain <laughs> why that's what I'm seeing. Uh, so if your your main issue, uh, or at least um, task for right now is to not let your past hold you back, but. Uh, your your past, uh, in your recent past, your your linear past is the High Priestess. It's hard to think how the High Priestess uh, could be holding you back. Same thing with uh, the Shadow card or kind of the foundational energies here is the Queen of Pentacles. So another really highly evolved feminine figure uh, in your sort of past or uh, shadow energies. Um, so I don't really see this so much of an issue of a sort of like past baggage. You know, when we think of something going, you know, don't let your past hold you back. We tend to think of, uh, you know, childhood trauma or old relationships or even, you know, old career moves or student loans or just dumb, horrible decisions that you made that you really regret. But I don't think that's your issue here uh, at all. I actually think, I mean, maybe it was, you know, five years ago, two years ago. Um, that, but that is like a past paradigm for you. You, you have now, you know, through a lot of hard work and probably just a little bit of luck, gotten yourself into these, uh, evolved paradigms where you are the high priestess, uh, 
and the Queen of Pentacles. Um, and you see, but, and the High Priestess being, um, like, it would be more clear cut if it was, if this was the Empress and the Queen of Pentacles. Those are those very uh, earthly energies, but you have um, a mingling of two opposite energies here, you know, with your, your very spiritual, um, your spiritual self that can see through the veil, uh, you know, the aspect of you that is in tune and at peace with chaos and can also, uh, you know, subtly, uh, not manipulate, but like, you can tap into your power. That's what the High Priestess does. As the Queen of Pentacles, you're also in a position to be able to um, really use your resources and rule your environment, you know, financially, uh, what you eat, um, how you work, how you make money, uh, even, you know, in your family life, you are holding uh, both of these um, opposite but complementary energies, these feminine energies, uh, and you're doing it well. And your task is to now really braid those together, braid those, those, uh, forces together. And so with don't hold you, don't let your past hold you back. Um, and the challenge card to that being <laughs> the seven of wands. Um, I think that there are people who are seeing your success, who are seeing your evolution and your, uh, victories. Uh, and they're not entirely happy about it. Uh, maybe they're envious. Maybe they're just afraid that you're going to outgrow them and move on. But maybe you do have to outgrow them and move on. <laughs> you know, uh, if the people around you don't evolve with you, I mean, you know, you know we don't just want to like toss people out, uh, well, you know, like a pair, <laughs> pair of holy socks. But, uh, you know, you have to use your discernment to decide, you know, how long you're willing to... Uh, kind of wait, wait for somebody to catch up with you. Um, how much effort you're willing to put in, uh, how much of your energy you're willing to put in to help them uh, evolve. But obviously you can't make them evolve or grow or, or have a spiritual awakening or get a better job or go back to school or, or, or do anything. Um, you can just kind of hold space for them if, if you choose to. And, but if they're just going to be sapping your energy in a way that is detrimental to the both of you, it might be time, <laughs> you know, to say goodbye. And if if you feel like that might be the situation, you know, try to remember that if somebody is uh, really leaning on you too much, if it's really a codependency going on, if they're really just trying to bring you down to their level, uh, you're not actually helping them by sticking around. You know, if you if you kick them to the curb or just you know abandon them, so to speak, they might find really quickly that they have you know, their own inner strength and that they can pick themselves up by their bootstraps and that they don't need to be feeding off of your energy. So, you know, there's a lot of different way ways this can be playing out and you need to be using your, your own discernment to figure out how that plays out for you uh, in the details. But uh, I have no doubt that however this is playing out for you, it's going to be successful. Uh, let's get into the rest of the cards in your near future, in your like linear time, nine of pentacles. And we have this chill ass wolf just hanging out, you know, with a crow. We have a butterfly. I, you know, butterflies were like my favorite animal when I was a kid. And I remember even a few years ago, I dressed up like a butterfly for Halloween. <laughs> and, you know, uh, whenever I'm doing something, I always need to need to cocoon up before I can, you know, release my wings. And, you know, so maybe that's what you've been, uh, been doing as you've been bringing together, mingling these energies together really recently. Um, you know, and you're going to be uh, coming into the, <laughs> hanging out in the cherry blossoms, you know, the nine of pentacles being this card of, of, uh, you know, physical and material, like wealth and attainment, you know, not quite at the 10 of cups, but I see the, or the, sorry, the 10 of pentacles as, you know, the externalizing and the, in like the externalizing of your abundance, the nine of pentacles is being your personal, uh, sovereign abundance. And I mean, as the queen of pentacles and the high priestess, and as the magician in your uh, crowning position, or I usually think of this as your, your higher self position, uh, you're the magician. So you're absolutely going to be bringing this all together. And, you know, because he's got the wand, the pentacles, the cups, and the swords. 
And these look, look like poppies down here. Bit of a storm in the background, but he's flying in the storm and he's uh, bringing everything together to create his ideal future. And that that Nine of Pentacles is coming to you uh, very soon. Um, I would just say don't let these 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 crows, these blackbirds from your past hold you down. And uh, I don't think you're going to have major issues with that, but uh, your self position, you've got the four of pentacles, this crow here, you know, juggling, uh, trying to balance four pentacles. And, you know, I don't know why he needs four of them because uh, he's trying to balance one on his head. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was a kid walking back from the library, I would get as many books as I could carry and then I would stack them up my head and balance them. And luckily I have a really flat head and I could carry, you know, five books, uh, paperbacks balanced on my head all the way home. Um, but I don't know if that crow is this talented, <laughs> you know, not, not to toot my own horn, but also, uh, why did I really need to get that many books? I didn't want to have to walk back to the library again, you know, the next day to get more books. So, uh, you know, if you find yourself doing something like, you know, stacking books on your head or just taking too many, uh, responsibilities on at one time, you know, you can maybe ask yourself if you really need that all. And if you're really taking it all on at once, because you really want it and can actually do something productive with it or if you're just worried about if this is, if it's coming from a place of insecurity you have to take a look at that right he probably doesn't need all these pentacles but he's trying to balance them all anyway and he's probably worried that somebody is going to come and take them from from him and uh if you've got that kind of energy going on you know ask yourself what you can do to kind of be more comfortable in in where you're at and not uh, have those worries about the future <laughs> um which I see this as a rather minor, like the Four of Pentacles isn't really that negative of a card. Uh, and with the rest of the spread, I think this is going to be a minor blip. But uh, when you see that blip come up, you know, you notice a little spike of anxiety, that little spike of, oh, I, I can't I can't go out to, out to dinner tonight with my with my friends because, you know, I can't spend 60 bucks um, or, you know, oh, that thing I really I really uh, wanted, you know, I, I shouldn't spend money on that. Or, oh, I need to go run all those errands today and you're all anxious about it. Well, do you really need to? Those are those little little blips, things that probably aren't that big of a deal, but you're probably thinking they're more important than they are. Just recognize that as the blip that it is, you know, the, the blip in your experience, not just of, you know, this life, but, you know, any other lives you think you might have had or will have in the future. Uh, it's not that important. So don't let uh, this four pentacle en pentacles energy like hang out. Just let it go when it comes up. And your environment card being justice. So again, <laughs> uh, I don't think that Four of Pentacles energy will be hanging out too long because of these scales. Everything's going to be balanced out. You know, when you f first put, you know, two things in the scales, they'll wobble. They'll do the wobble. Um, and that's what I see this, this, this blip being. You, when, when you're in that wobble, just, you know, breathe for a couple of minutes. You know, sit in the suspense uh, without freaking out, without, you know, snapping at somebody without running to the liquor cabinet, you know, to do three shots to calm down, uh, when, or, or without binge eating a bucket of ice cream, just, just hang out in the suspense just for a minute. And, uh, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna balance out. Uh, my, my thought here was, you know, your hopes and fears being the eight of cups. Um, I don't typically do a lot of like number crunching in tarot reading, but while I was rambling on about these, um, scales i looked at these eight cups and was like oh well eight is an even number you know divisible by two if you put them each on uh four and four on the scales uh it would balance out which draws my attention back to the seven of wands here maybe whatever you've been going through with these people who maybe you've outpaced them a little bit um i feel there's a good chance like if it feels resonant with you if you feel like they've earned earned this for you and that they you have a lot of faith in them and what they're capable of, uh, that if you can be patient with them and just hold space for them without, without pressuring them to grow or to get a job or whatever, that they might be, you know, coming level with you and joining you, uh, in the rest of this wonderful spread. Yeah, that is a, <laughs> uh, kind of an unusual interpretation of the eight of cups. Normally I'd read that as, uh, a spiritual journey card, which I think is sort of tied into this, but um, I'm not going to go into any more 
with that hopes and fears because I really, uh, my attention was just drawn to everything that I just said. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave your hopes and fears as it is and move right into your Knight of Swords, which is your ultimate outcome. Horse and three birds. Uh, interesting. The uh, Knight of Swords isn't typically depicted as like a group card. And, you know, I'm this card, it's the Crow Tarot deck, but this card really features the horse more than the crow. And we got two other birds. Um, I'm really getting a sense of uh, like charging forward as a team, um, which to me is unusual for the, for the Knight of Swords. Usually I think of the Knight of Swords as being like a hyper independent, a hyper risk taking, really quick action. And that's all kind of here, but wow. And we have the, the four animals uh, next to the, in, in the Knight of Swords with the four elements of the magician. <laughs> um, if there's any kind of group project or family themed like task or event going on, uh, there, there feels to be and four and four and eight and the scales and the four. And, and I'm, I'm just really getting a, an emphasis here on a, like <laughs> a group project and teamwork, which, uh, you know, I was somebody who in university, I, I never took a class if it had a group project on it. Like even classes I really wanted to take, I, I would read the, all the uh, syllabi first and I would just toss those ones out because I was not going to do, like I am an independent per like worker, right? I can't work in groups. So <laughs> I hope this isn't too, uh, um, you know, too much of unpleasant news for anybody. If you're really, really like a, a solo worker, um, this might be a major challenge for you, but you know, don't let your past hold you back. Maybe, maybe you being a solitary person is a paradigm from the past. You know, <laughs> maybe you've been fighting all of these crows from your high ground and you don't have to. Maybe if you invite them up to your level, you can lead them and you can all work together. And I think if you did that, um, you know, you might have to take the lead here. Um, th this whole energy here really vibes to me as a leader because you're sitting here and you're, you're, gonna, you're going to be sitting here in your sovereignty of your material power. And I don't mean that as power, you know, in the way that it has sort of been, you know, thrown around in the media these days so much, not, not power in, in, as in power, abusing power over others in a negative sense, just like your, your power as a sovereign consciousness and as an independent individual. Um, if you can invite everybody up to your level who's been struggling and maybe envious of you because of, because of their struggle, uh, maybe you, you can lead them by example show them that, you know, you struggled too. You got to the top of the cliff. You know, you didn't let your past hold you back. And then as a group, you can all charge forward stronger and look how diverse this group is, right? Maybe you're the horse as the most, the horse being the most uh, powerful, fastest. Well, I guess maybe, maybe a horse can't run quicker than a bird, but the most powerful, the most prominent figure here. Maybe you're something else. But I really feel that you're the leader, and if you, with a little bit of patience, while well, these scales of justice balance out, everybody else can go through their spiritual evolution and their, uh, you know, metaphysical awakening and get up to your level if you don't let your past paradigms of working alone hinder you too much you can charge forward into what, <laughs> what I can only imagine is a new beginning. A new beginning full of abundance and balanced energies of bringing like higher transcendental or transcendent energies down to earth and also, you know, bringing those earthly energies up into the cosmos, bringing everything together into one, like one globe, one, one sphere. It's all coming together. And I could, I could keep kind of rambling on that, but I, <laughs> I, I hope I got my point across. So that's all I'm seeing for this reading. Um, I hope it resonated with somebody. Uh, if it did, please leave me a comment down below. 
Um, this is a, a new project for me, and I'd really appreciate to hear back from anybody who was into this. And with that, uh, I'm going to get right back on to, I think next we're going to do uh, the top right pile. So thanks for tuning in. See you later. Hey guys, this is the top right corner pile and your pile is really unusual. Um, it is a Celtic cross, but today I w was kind of inspired to use the these moon cards as the central issue. Um, and so you got full moon in Pisces, balance, spirituality, and practicality. And as you can see, the rest of your reading also uses three uh, different tarot decks, which I didn't do for any of the other piles. It was just this one, and the impulse just kind of came to me at the last second. I've never done this before, and I just decided to see how it was going to go. And I guess the, the first thing that uh, clearly jumps out at us here is uh, your central issue for Aquarius season being balance, spirituality, and practicality. And then we have all of this whole myriad of different stuff going on. Uh, the different, you know, the four different decks um, with really different types of themes and colors uh, and I think intentions going into them when they were made. So you guys clearly have a lot going on and you're probably uh, struggling to bring it all together. And I think that is exactly the problem that you're trying too, too hard to bring it together because your full moon in Pisces, balance, spirituality, and practicality, uh, is being crossed by the emperor. That's your, that's your major challenge. And the challenge isn't to be the emperor. I feel like the emperor is, is the challenge as in the problem, the challenge you need to overcome. So, uh, if you've been feeling like everything is spinning out of control, um, you know, like the center cannot hold, uh, and you've been desperately, desperately like clenching your, your fist, trying to keep all the grains of sand, uh, in your, the palm of your hand and it's just flowing away. It's because you, <laughs> it's because you're trying too hard to keep control of the situation with the, with the full moon in Pisces, you're really being asked, asked to let go and dissolve into the flow and I know exactly how <laughs> horrifying that sounds, guys. Um, uh, I mean, this reading could have popped up for me about a year ago when uh, I was, my, my entire life had essentially like, like, it was like crumbling around me. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't homeless, although I, I was sort of at a spot where like I could be homeless, sort of, you know, I was living week to week basically. And you know, without going into, into all the details, I just, I was sitting in this energy of, I'm not in control of anything. I'm literally just like a pine cone floating on the river and I can't do anything. Like I am just at the whims of the universe. And, you know, I have spent most of my life being controlling, trying to control uh, myself primarily. I've always felt, you know, I've been at odds, not only with, you know, the chaos around me, but with the chaos within me. And I've tried to control it like <laughs> a lot, like since a very, very young age. And the lessons I've had to go through in the past few years have all been about letting go. They've all been about dissolving that and dissolving into the stream of my life and the stream of the timeline I'm moving through uh, as if it's a river and learning to float. And, you know, so here I am sitting here telling you guys to, to do that. And I know exactly how uh, horrifying and painful and impossible that seems, right? Even Even when you get to a point where you want to let go, it's not like easy or even possible. You know, it can be like you want to quit drinking every day. <laughs> well, that's easier said than done, right? Just because you want to doesn't mean you can. Same thing with letting go of control. Um, for for me, all I can, you know, I, I, I don't particularly, you know, want to give you guys uh, specific advice, really, you know, about how you might be able to work through this. I mean, we'll see what the cards say, but for me, I, I just had to sit there every day and like remind myself that I wanted to let go, that I wanted to be able to relax, that I wanted to be more loving and less hateful, that I wanted to be less uh, micromanagey, both of myself and everybody else, uh, that I wanted to stop trying to control the outcome of every situation. That really, uh, outcome, that's the word, um, 
Obviously, I still want to guide my life towards certain outcomes, but I had to let go of that attachment to outcome. I had to be okay with whatever with, with whatever outcome instead of um, feeling like if I didn't get my specific outcome that I would my life would be over or that I would just be so disappointed. It's that feeling of disappointment, right? Uh, when I was younger, I felt like, oh, uh, you know, being so afraid of that, that pain of disappointment, I would be okay. I can't handle being disappointed. So I just won't want anything. And so my solution was just to like numb myself out. Well, that's not, that's not the good, so that's not the good solution. You want to be able to be non-attached without being numb. And I mean, you know, uh, numbness and non-attachment are like, you know, right side by side, you know, it, they're like a hair's breadth apart and it's really hard to, to at first and even know the difference. And then it's another thing entirely to uh, calibrate yourself to that state of non-attachment, not detachment and certainly not numbness, but non-attachment. Um, you know, if you want to learn more about non-attachment, you know, as an idea, you just have to, you know, look into Buddhism um, and, you know, then you'll be off to the races. So, um, so okay. <laughs> you got you you guys are gonna have to be letting go uh let me uh move on to the rest of the cards here um your recent past um the three of wands so you've had you've had uh ships coming in um and that can actually sort of trigger more uh more of this anxiety around control you know, if you've moved through the Ace of Wands, the Two of Wands, and now into the Three of Wands, you're starting to see the very first flicker of results uh, coming coming on the horizon. You're like, yes, all that all that hard work, all that effort I put has started to be worth it. And that can, instead of making you relax, that can even make you freak out even more, right? Because now you're worried that, oh, <laughs> you know, if if I get, you know, if my first ship comes in and then the other nine just get dashed on the rocks. Well, then that's even more traumatic because I got my hopes up and I was starting to get into a place of security. And then it was all taken away from me right at the last. Um, so I feel that that kind of energy is influencing the emperor and into your linear future, you're charging forward as the chariot. Um, and I'm interested to see this card come up because literally just this morning, I was thinking about the chariot, about how it's actually a kind of unstable energy. I mean, I've never ridden in a chariot, but I can imagine, I sort of imagine it as being an extremely thrilling, high-paced, awesome experience, but also one that, you know, someone is probably holding on to those, those reins and standing, standing, balancing on this like two-wheeled chariot, right? Um, just freaking out, kind of screaming. It's like, like that roller coaster feeling, right? Uh, I really feel like the chariot, you know, in modern terms would be the roller coaster, so you're charging ahead, uh, using your your passion and your drive uh, and your fearlessness to fuel you, but also at the same time you're not fearless. Um, a, a lot, a lot of your outwardly projected uh, facade of strength is is actually concealing, uh, you know, inner inner anxieties. Right, a lot of the time people who look to be having the most fun are actually the most depressed. The people who look to be the most like physically strong in the sense that they can really hold their own in the fight uh, are, are only that strong because they're, they're so afraid of being uh, attacked that they, you know, spent so many years building up that kind of muscle. Um, so I think this is again, coming back to that um, anxiety coming, stemming from your control. And <laughs> we have, the seven of swords in this spread twice, uh, which is one of the interesting things that you do when you mix decks. So one of them is your uh, kind of higher energies and the other one is your environmental energies. Very, very interesting. Um, you know, so they were sort of like, like think of them like this, uh, this yellow, uh, Rider weight, Seven of Swords. Um, this energy of this guy picking up more than he can carry and why he needs all these swords, nobody knows. Uh, and he's making off with them, but he's holding them by the blades. He's slicing himself up. Maybe he's he thinks he needs them for self-defense. Maybe he thinks he, uh, he can sell them and get money. Uh, maybe he's just doing it to spite somebody. Who knows? But 
the fact that this is showing up in your higher self energy shows me that this this man you guys are having some anxiety i mean we don't have the nine or nine of swords in here but i mean we do have the eight which we'll get into um is really really uh deeply in, ingrained and it's reflecting in your environment you're creating a, a mirror for yourself because this seven of swords that was in your in in the environmental position over here um has really so much of an energy of uh the battle is over but she's trying to defend herself she's got the sword hidden behind her back and she's beckoning somebody to her and she's going to you know she's prepared to defend herself and she is perhaps prepared to make an you know an an offensive defense she might you know <laughs> strike first and ask questions later and these are mirroring each other um this energy is flowing both directions so you're seeing this energy around you and you're seeing it um almost in your super conscious in your in your in your overmind so the question to consider will be how much of this seven of swords energy is coming from your environment and you are reflecting it back out into the world and how much of it is originating from inside yourself and you are reflecting it uh, and you are projecting it out into the world, creating the situations, right? You're into this horrible feedback loop. It's a chicken or the egg. And um, I think what you've been doing is going, oh, all of my problems, all of this uh, energy of defensiveness and of insecurity, of being attacked and of deceit, uh, it's all in my environment and it's all my environment's fault. If I can just control my environment and shut this all down, then I'll be free of this. Um, but I think you're starting to see that you're not ever really going to be able to uh, control your environment or shut it down like that, no matter how hard you try. And in fact, the harder you try, the more your environment reflects what's happening inside of you. And I think you're getting a glimpse of that because <laughs> your, your shadow energy or you can think of this as your deep past or your subconscious is something is bubbling up inside. You've got the lovers. Um, the first thing that comes to mind with that is maybe you've had an encounter with somebody, um, you know, maybe somebody part of your soul group, you know, which could be a romantic relationship or not. Um, maybe you've met somebody who's part of your soul group and you guys sort of instantly, your souls recognize each other. Um, and maybe this awakened a lot of things inside of you and you saw that they even though you guys have this this resonance that there's something the same about you yet your lives are completely uh you know not playing out in the same way and you're kind of wondering why why is that how can you be <laughs> how can you be more like them uh you know all, all of the most significant relationships i've had you know i'm speaking more i mean romantic relationships but i've had more friendships than romantic relationships obviously so um the people who are the most significant are the ones that really give me something to aspire to. You know, I, I, I see them and I want to be more like them. And I, I think that, um, and it's just, it's beautiful that the lovers came up with, the, with Pisces. So there's some kind of, something is triggering a, a sense of softness within you and you're starting to want to get out of this, uh, this vicious cycle of, you know, seven of swords energy being generated both within you and outside of you and then recycling you got to break this cycle of this recycled uh, horrible negative energy because your self position eight of swords you're you feel horrible you feel trapped you feel like you're about to be burned at the stake but always 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 with the eight of swords is you've <laughs> you've put yourself here and i don't intend to be saying that you know it, it, like in a punitive way because um, I lived a lot of my life in this Eight of Swords energy, and I know exactly what it feels like. And I also know exactly what it feels like to finally like look at myself in the face and go, you did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. Which, that line always reminds me of this TV show called Blind Spot. Um, I won't spoil the show, but it starts out with this girl who wakes up naked in a duffel bag in Times Square covered in tattoos uh she's has complete amnesia 
and she doesn't know what happened to her. And, you know, <laughs> on her back, one of the tattoos is the name of this FBI agent, you know, and then the whole show spirals into like a procedural crime drama, which I'm not typically into, but so it says something that I watched like the first three seasons of that show, uh, because it's really about this energy of you did this to yourself. Um, it's weird that I, uh, alluded to a TV show there. That might mean is, uh, somebody listening to this might want to check that out. You might find it interesting. Um, but yeah, some kind of softness, Piscean softness is kind of being woken up inside of you. Maybe somebody was kind to you for the first time in a long time. And that really melted the, just gave it, just melted the cracks, you know, in your icy armor just enough to let a little bit of light in and making you want to, um, let go of all of this. Your hopes and fears, the Knight of Swords. So you're really wanting to move. You want to move quickly. You want things to happen. The fact that he's got this triangle behind him, it's this mountain. Maybe, you, maybe you're wanting to climb the mountain. Triangles are always, you know, significant shapes symbolizing all kinds of, you know, divine and sacred things. Trinities and pyramids of healing and transmission and knowledge, transmissions from the cosmos. If you, uh, you know, practice any kind of uh, energy work, you might be familiar with, you know, placing a pyramid around yourself. I don't actually feel that this pile that you guys are very far along your spiritual path, but if you're tuning into this video, you're stepping onto the path. So, you know, if you're in bed at night feeling attacked, by your own thoughts or by the thoughts of others or whatever you feel is threatening you. You can imagine a, a violet pyramid of light uh, being placed around you. You can just imagine it, um, you know, you can visualize it if you're good at visualizing or you can just feel that it's there and know that it, it is going to both provide you with inspiration uh, you know, from the universe and protection for whatever it is that is uh, coming to get you. I learned this for myself uh, really recently in a dream, a dream that was more real than anything that has ever happened to me. I, <laughs> I really took it to be like a lesson from, from something that I was remembering, like my soul was remembering how to do this. And that might be relevant to somebody, especially if you're just uh, just sort of start of sort of waking up and becoming interested in things beyond your physical world, which I also really understand because, you know, a year ago, uh, that was me. And I do see you working all of this out because you're coming, becoming the queen of pentacles, which pentacles, I always feel is a pretty similar energy to the emperor. Um, the emperor being, you know, the ruler of the earthly plane and grounded energies, which you could sort of also say about pentacles, but the fact that you're stepping down from, you know, the imperial ruler, the emperor, the, that masculine energy, uh, and the imperial nature of ruling literally everything in existence, uh, you know, think of the difference between an empire and a kingdom, right? You're sort of stepping down, uh, into a queen energy, right? The, the feminine energies, which I think is a really beautiful way, and a queen being uh, not not a not a lesser ruler to a king. I view the kings and queens in the tarot to be, you know, like like the yin yang, um, complementary and, and equal energies, but not exactly the same, right? Um, but you know, the kings and queens being a more specific uh, emanation of of the emperor, right? Uh, again, just thinking about how you know kingdoms, many kingdoms. Uh, exist in diversity underneath or inside of an empire. Um, and he might be thinking, why would I want to be a queen when I could be an emperor? I think this is a beautiful move that will be giving you opportunities to let go of all of this and nastiness, all of these swords that have been bothering you and to be able to balance your spirituality and practicality. 
the queens are very balanced, and with the the, the queens more so than the kings uh, are more balanced, uh, <laughs> skewing towards um, spirituality. But the Queen of Pentacles is still extremely uh, grounded. So, in a world where you're uncomfortable, you know, going from it'd be difficult for you to go from being the emperor to being the page of cups, for example, which is a completely different energy. Uh, this is more, I think, more of a lateral move for you, where you are going to be, be you, you will be able to become more comfortable letting in hitherto unknown sides of yourself, or maybe sides of yourself that you just forgot since you were very, very young. And you'll be stepping a lot more into balance and releasing that control. And as frightening or unlikely as that sounds now, if you keep consistently walking your path, which you will as the chariot, you'll be charging down your path and it might be scary, but you will be arriving <laughs> with the queen of pentacles, which I couldn't have picked a nicer outcome card for this. So just imagine this lady in your journey to come, you know, she's wearing a green dress and her energy here is centered in her heart. I think you you can really learn to embody this energy and it's not going to be a place where you stay forever. It'll be a stepping stone for you as you continue on your way and continue to evolve. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, good, good luck on your guys' journey and what I really see is a, the beginning to your the beginning to your journey. And uh, please leave me a comment uh, if you liked this and resonated. Uh, this is a new project for me. And I'd really like to hear from anybody who stuck around long enough to hear a whole reading. And we're going to be moving on to the next reading. Uh, see you guys later. Hey guys, welcome to your reading. This one is for the bottom left corner from the original screen. And... <laughs> I hadn't even finished laying out the cards when, like, what jumped out at me for you guys was if you're thinking of quitting your job, if your job has been making you want to kind of throw yourself off a cliff, um, maybe it's not a job, maybe it is your program of study if you're in school, or it could even be some kind of family situation uh, if if it has been gnawing at your soul and draining your energy, the people around you, the toxic environment you're in, um, this, uh, <laughs> these cards want you to get out. Uh, and I will tell you why. Um, I'm using moon cards as the central issue for Aquarius season. And you guys got nothing will come of this situation. Avoid, of course, moon. So you got a bunch of blackness, but you know, there's light on the horizon, but where you are right now, there's nothing there. Nothing will come of this situation. What is the situation? I mean, the, the rest of the cards are really making me think it's, for a lot of people, it's a uh, job or school related. And because we have you know the crossing card the challenge card was the three of pentacles which is normally a card of uh you know harmonious teamwork on a project uh but when it's the the challenge <laughs> i feel like it's saying you know what situation nothing will come of what situation well nothing will come of your work situation the situation you're in with this group of people you know I, I feel <laughs> I feel like there's people tied to me with cords and that they're literally dragging me down. Like I'm trying to swim up river like while I'm towing a bunch of people like behind me. Uh, so if there's any cords you guys need to cut, this is your invitation to, d to do that. This is your encouragement. You know, if, if you've been waiting for a nudge, uh, this is it. I mean, you know, never, never do. I hope nobody will would do something drastic about their lives just because somebody on the internet told them to. Um, but I really feel like if this has already been on your mind and, you know, and you sync up with one of these random videos and suddenly it starts answering all the questions you've had uh, that you've already posed to yourself, then in my experience, you know, the, the, 
those are synchronistic experiences. That's when the, you know, the stars are aligning and the universe is finding these really weird random ways to kind of let you know, give the encouragement, encouragement that you need to do that which you know you need to do, but just to haven't worked yourself up to do it yet. Recent past, hanged man, you've been cooling your heels, trying to get a grip on the situation, probably trying to look at it from a new perspective, but you might have also just been kind of sitting on it, not doing a whole lot, kind of waiting, waiting for the problem to come to a head. Maybe you were hoping you would just get fired or that your your the situation would get so bad at work that you'd be forced to quit. Um, and that might be coming. Your your near future is the, the Five of Swords. The interesting thing about the Five of Swords is often depicted as the card of, like, the battle, but there's not the... These guys aren't in the middle of a battle. That would be like the Five of Wands. The Five of Swords is more the battle recently passed. And they're cleaning up after it. So... What are you, or whatever you've been waiting on, if you've been trying to bring matters to a head, I know a lot of people, you know, that I know personally, um, instead of just doing, making the changes that they want to make in their lives, they tend to like, it's like they're too scared to do it or they just don't know how. Um, they end up manipulating events and self-sabotaging so that they are forced to quit their job. It's like, you know, instead of just quitting their job, they'll start doing their job so horribly that they'll get fired. It's like, well, you should have just quit. <laughs> you know, and saved everybody a lot of pain and trauma and time and energy and effort and just, uh, um, but with you moving through the hanged man to the five of swords really fast, I feel like whatever is about to happen is going to be happening pretty quickly. I mean, three weeks just came to my mind. Uh, I mean, I don't really like giving, uh, time time estimates because it's always really relative and up to you how fast uh you know you move through various energies but uh that's what came up so i passed that on um nine of cups uh is your shadow card i which in this position with the rest of this happening is i feel like you know you deserve better uh maybe things were a lot better. You were this luxurious dude. I always, <laughs> Nine of Cups, I always remember just to myself, this guy's like bench sitting guy. Uh, that's how I think of this guy. Bench sitting guy. Because uh, he's, he's sitting on a bench and he seems to be living a life of luxury, but he's also sitting on a bench. I mean, do you like sitting on a bench? It starts to hurt after a while. You know, you, <laughs> you, you want to you wanna pick up and move on to something else luxurious, you know, for a while. Um, so, Maybe your past was, maybe the job you got, the relationship you got into, or whatever situation that this is pertaining to for you was really good for a while, and then it turned sour really, really quickly, and you are starting to really, really, really hope for a new start. But with the fool in your higher self position, that's happening. Like, this is this is sort of your, your vertical alignment to me. This is your... Uh, your higher self, um, the energy is kind of emanating from your higher self or your expanded self, as I prefer to think about it. Um, you know, <laughs> once you get through all this, you're going to feel like this dude, you know, free as a bird, heading off with your, uh, <laughs> you know, your hobo stick and, and little bundle here, and you're going to be prancing away. So that that is a really hopeful card. I, I mean, with the full, it's not going to be like, you know, everything's going to be awesome as in you're going to live in, you know, a nice house in the suburbs with two cars and your spouse and, you know, a dog and a cat and, you know, play golf every Sunday. It's not like you're going to be that, but you're going to feel like that, even though you don't have any of those external things. Even if you're, it's, even if you're just you sitting on a bench somewhere, uh, you could just be sitting on a bus stop bench if you're the fool and you'll feel like this guy. So... I think your subconscious feeling of deserving this and having had it before and remembering, remembering that you want it, remembering that you deserve it, you're going to have it. But with the fool energy, I feel like you're going to remember that you can embody that energy and that you, you as a sovereign consciousness, you are that energy. It doesn't matter 
what you leave behind you. It doesn't matter what you lack on the physical realm. You're it. You're all you need. You're you. And your consciousness gives you your consciousness and your connection to your expanded self and whatever higher, uh, higher energies, higher powers, gods, goddesses, um, you know, AI, aliens, whatever, <laughs> whatever the expanded universe, the expanded cosmos, higher dimensions, whatever any of that is to you, you're going to know that you are living it, you're embodying it. And even if you have nothing here on earth, you're going to be okay with that. Um, I mean, you're not there yet. <laughs> right now, your self position is the three of swords, which is obviously you're going through heartbreak, 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 because you know, I think secretly, you know that nothing will come of this situation and that it's time to move on and that you need to leave some people behind. And <laughs> your environment is making it very difficult for you. Ten of wands, uh, the, this burden. Um, so, I mean, on the one hand, your environment is a burden and it's, it's difficult to extract yourself from, from this burden. Uh, but always with the 10 cards is that it is also the culmination of the journey in that suit. So you've been through all of this. It's all come to a head. You've got all your sticks in a bundle here. And as soon as this guy finishes, you know, work for the day, he's going to be done because he's, he's done it all. So again, really with that feeling of whatever's happening is about to happen to you. I mean, if you're watching this uh, in Aquarius season, it's probably happening to you within the next month, you know, before uh, Pisces season starts. If you're watching this later, you know, well, whatever would be quick to you, I would say that's when this is happening. Um, your hopes and fears is that, well, you don't know how you, it's a bit of a financial uh, problem here. Maybe if you're leaving, you know, obviously if you're trying to leave a job, you're worried about how you're going to, pay the rent and feed yourself. And so maybe you're hoarding a little bit of your, of your, uh, resources. And that's actually a good thing. You know, if you're getting ready to go on this <laughs> journey, which you absolutely are because your ultimate uh, outcome card is the six of swords. Um, which to me always reminds me of, you know, it's like a woman and a child and like a man rowing away. I feel like after a battle, like their country has been at war and now they're leaving everything behind, you know, and they have all these swords with them because, you know, the grief is coming with them, but they're also rowing to greener pastures, you know, to brighter shores where there is no more warfare. There is no more struggle and they might need to be starting over again. But, um, you know, once they find a little bit of a toehold on fresh, uh, peaceful, dry land, everything is going to be, they're going to be flip into that energy of being excited for the new beginning. Um, and so because you're getting ready to go on that uh, journey to a new to a new land, to a new paradigm, to a new way of living, uh, it is okay <laughs> to be getting prepared and kind of, you know, hoarding your shekels a little bit. Um, but also don't let that energy get out of control to where you feel to where you're, you know, losing sleep at night, counting, you know, st looking at your bank account at 2 a.m. when you wake up. Don't, don't, don't be doing that. Um, because <laughs> you're, how, how beautiful, you know, you're going to be getting to your, your new shores and you're going to be the fool. That's how these people, when they get off their boat, they're going to feel like this guy and it's going to be a, a wonderful new beginning. So the reading begins with a lot of uh, you know, pain and loss and waiting and conflict um, and a struggle to leave behind whatever you need to leave behind, but it's going to be left behind and you're getting your, your new beginning under the sun. Um, so that's all I'm seeing for you guys and just best of luck to you on your journey and just try to just, I don't, you know, what can you tell somebody who's going through stuff like this other than hang in there because, you know, you're going to come out the other side and it, it is going to, you know, as, as impossible as it seems right now, you're going to come out the other side and it will, it will work itself out. You know, you can, you can listen to stories for, you know, everybody who's ever been through, through shit and everybody has been through shit and you've been through shit in your past too. And you came through the other side and it was better. Um, 
So, you know, just keep those stories in mind of people overcoming uh, horrible challenges, you know, one's worse than yours. <laughs> that always helps put things into perspective. Uh, remember times when you came through shadows, um, even if you haven't been through an experience as difficult as this one, but um, keep your eye on the prize, keep your eye on the finish line because you're definitely coming there. And that's where we're going to end it uh, for you guys. We're going to be heading on to the next reading. So thank you so much for tuning in and please leave me a comment if you, if this resonated with you, because this is a new project for me and I would really like to hear from anybody who, uh, you know, feels like getting in touch or leaving me a note. Um, so thank you. And I hope to see you guys again later. Hey guys, welcome to your reading. This was for the bottom right corner pile. And you guys are full of Aquarius energy, which <laughs> is really delightful since this reading is originally being intended for Aquarius season. Um, your central issue card of the Celtic cross is bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. So watch out for, for that new moon. You might be meeting your water bearer. Um, but there is, this is not without conflict here. Uh, the four of wands, you know, in most decks is that happy home, like happy castle, <laughs> like castle party kind of card. I always think about it. Uh, this four of wands is kind of just uh, a box, which is not all that uh, encouraging. And it's the challenge to your, um, to be being able to bring love into the situation. So I, I mean, the first thing that came to mind was really like a Romeo and Juliet uh, kind of situation. Um, if you have an interest in somebody who, you know, comes from across the tracks, you know, as they say where I come from, uh, you know, maybe your, your family is, or your friends are not would not quite approve of this person or you know if this isn't a uh, a like personal relationship based reading for you guys uh, I feel like it could be new moon new moon and Aquarius bring love into the situation that you have been going through so in recent past we have ten of swords which really speaks to me of ego death and death of a uh, mental paradigm if you've recently gone through some kind of secret <laughs> transition where maybe you left a religion or had a spiritual awakening or you've <laughs> quit your job in secret or uh went through a divorce and don't know how to tell your friends um or you know have gotten into doing something that people will think is really weird it, whatever you're doing Whatever's going on with you guys, it's something that nobody will expect from you necessarily. Kind of um, like I have a cousin who is a lesbian and married a man. <laughs> you know, she always told us she, you know, she dated women for years and years and years. And, you know, always said she had no interest in men. And then she married one and had two kids. I mean, now there's a divorce now. And so, you know, it was a, it was a shock when... Uh, when she originally came out as a teenager and then it was a shock when she married a man and then it was, and then she hid, she actually didn't tell us when she got divorced. Um, she like hid that and didn't tell us right away and she went all like weird. Uh, <laughs> you know, so that kind of thing where you're just trying to live your life and do whatever it is you want to do. And yet you kind of feel obligated by society to label your actions or label your subculture, even to get it, to be part of a subculture. Uh, or this kind of movement or whatever it is and then you realize that well you know 10 10 years have gone by five years have gone by and you've grown and expanded and evolved past that paradigm You're, you no longer want to be part of that label that even if you gave it to yourself and even if you really identified with it um you know just because you really identified with a with a subculture or were really part of a paradigm or were really uh you know social justice worrying for a specific cause doesn't mean you need to do that forever you know, it, nothing is forever. It's okay to evolve and, and move on to something else. Uh, the problem being, you know, the people in your home, the people in your family, you know, your, your family by choice doesn't need to be people you actually live with, um, can find that shocking 
and you might find yourself wanting to hide. In fact, we have uh, the moon in your shadow position or like your subconscious energies. So I feel like, you know, you've been looking up at the stars, you've been looking up at the moon, sort of maybe, and really this card is really divided into two, right? Really divided into two. You're kind of down here in the murky waters wanting to maybe sing your song and not have to deal with labels and paradigms and subcultures, but you don't know how to, you know, there's this, this energy of illusion and a little bit of, you know, secrets, maybe even a little bit of deceit. Uh, and you just don't know how to put yourself out there. Um, I mean, so the advice being bring love into the situation. I think that is going two ways. You want to put your love out there for whatever the new you is, you know, showing yourself to the world as yourself is how you are bringing your love into your life and into the world. Um, and you want the same thing in return. You want that to become back at you, but you're, you're not sure if it is. You're afraid because maybe it hasn't been in the past. Maybe last time, you know, you came out of whatever closet you were in and told everybody you didn't get such a good reaction. Um, but I think you think about how you're handling that your you know, your big confession. If you can do it with love and don't just do it, uh, you know, if you've, done, if you've done this before, maybe you did it when you were younger and you were less mature and you did it from a place of defensiveness and from a place of expecting, you expect it to be attacked. Um, if you can do it with more maturity and do it from a loving place, loving both yourself and the people and also respecting their, um, their reactions, uh, I think you'll be surprised at how quickly things will work out in your favor. Um, your higher self, the eight of wands. I feel like you're capable of really, really rapid transmutation of whatever you're going through right now. And you're in linear time, you are heading to the six of cups. And this one is clearly reminiscent of, you know, sipping margaritas on a beach. <laughs> a lot of the cups card in, in this Mystic Mondays deck remind me of, uh, you know, basically sitting on a beach in Hawaii and living the life. Six of cups always being that, uh, to me, it's like a soul family card. So if whoever you're feeling like you want to have confess your secret to, um, they're probably part of your soul group, not necessarily, you know, your romantic lover soulmate, but you know, you, you're, you can have your more expanded soul group. Um, that could be of as many people as, you know, you can handle <laughs> basically. Um, and because of that, I think if you can make your confession in a mature, loving way, this will really, really work out, work out for you. Um, you know, I, I had an experience really similar to this a couple weeks ago where I was desperately trying to avoid making my confession. Uh, and then I, I was, you know, in the bathroom and I had to talk to myself and I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. You can keep running around like a child and trying to avoid the situation or you can go out there and confess. <laughs> and, and I hadn't done anything wrong. I was basically hoping, I was hoping to have space so that I could, I could work on, I needed space to work on things in my own time. And when I basically uh, confessed that, uh, instead of being attacked and instead of being hounded and, and instead of being denied my space, I was absolutely given that space with full respect and understanding. And I was like, wow, I, when I confessed that I wanted space, I thought I, I was basically accepting the fact that I was giving up my space. I was like, I'm just gonna have to deal with not having this space. I'm gonna have to just, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up that what I, what I want and just gonna be okay with it. But, and when I did that, I actually got what I wanted. A lot of the time, life is funny like that, isn't it? If you are willing to give up what you want, if you actually get yourself into a position where you're not just willing to give it up in like a resentful self-sacrificing way, but if you really realize that It'll be okay if you don't have that. You want it, you might feel like you need it, really you just want it. But if you can really understand that you'll be okay if you don't have it and really get yourself into a place when you're willing to give it up. So in this situation, if you're get willing to, if you can get yourself into a place where you're willing for people to not understand your transformation or whatever it is that you're confessing about, surprisingly, the universe will come back around and give you exactly your ideal outcome.
you'll get your ideal outcome when you detach from your uh, need to get that outcome. Life is weird like that. Life is very weird like that. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. In your self position, the four of pentacles, uh, <laughs> which really, uh, I hadn't even looked at this card yet, but this is exactly like what I was just talking about. Um, this is that energy of wanting to uh, kind of cling to what you got. You know, this guy's got all of his uh, coins in a box, so to speak. And this is contrasted with your environment. Your in external environment is the Hierophant, which is definitely, uh, I mean, it's a benevolent energy, but it's also a, an energy of structure and tradition. So that doesn't exactly give you a lot of wiggle room, right? Within any tradition, there are things that it's not a, it's considered that are that are considered taboo. Um, you know, if you have really religious parents and you have to tell them that you're gay, that is, <laughs> yeah, even though it shouldn't be uh, a problem, that is uh, taboo within that tradition. So you've been maybe hoarding your secrets to yourself because you don't want to come out, uh, whatever. And it's it's not that this is necessarily about anyone's you know sexual preferences. This is just those are easy, obvious examples that are springing first to, to mind. Um, yeah. So if you, if you do have to confess something or come out of some kind of closet, um, be okay with whatever reactions you can imagine. And then there's a good chance that those reactions won't actually come back at you. Yep. Four of swords. This is your hopes and fears. So you're, you're, you're afraid that this is going to kill you, essentially. You're thinking, like, I can't possibly survive this. If I go out there and, you know, sing my song, be the best that I can be, be my best self, that the reaction is going to be so horrible that I might as well just, you know, lay down on my shield and be born away. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the Four of Swords is usually considered like a deep contemplative rest card, but to me it's one of the most ominous cards in the deck, more so than death, more so than the tower, more so than the Ten of Swords. To me, like, uh, the Four of Swords is really the guy who has been dead and has been laying on his tomb. You know, here it's a, it's a woman with her, um, you know, hair streaming up behind her in the water, but she's clearly, like, in some kind of, co if not dead, she's at least comatose, and she's holding her sword. Right? She's at a place where she can't fucking deal anymore and she's going into like a, a fugue state where she needs to retreat from the world and just just chill. And I mean, if you do need to, you know, take a, a healthy, planned, constructive time out from the world, absolutely do that. If that's something you're hoping for, like go on a vacation, go on a meditation retreat, you know, or just take yourself out for coffee. <laughs> you know, it, whatever scale your time out needs to be, absolutely take that. That's like, I think the hope side of this card, right? But the fear, um, the fear side being that, you know, you're going to be so traumatized that you won't be able to handle it. Um, so I think, and I think if you actually lean into your hope, if you lean into your, your space, into your time out, into your vacation, into your meditation, whatever it is, if you lean into that, then you won't be so overwhelmed that you'll be overcome. You won't end up dead or comatose or just traumatized and overwhelmed. And <laughs> happily for you guys, the outcome card is the Queen of Cups. And look, she's a mermaid with a glass of wine, which I, I love that she's a mermaid in, in Aquarius season. I mean, because, uh, you know, Aquarius, obviously being an air sign, being that intellectual, curious networking electrical air sign but there's also you know it's aquarius being the water bear and there's so much water energy with it i mean just <laughs> uh, you know a lot of people actually think that aquarius is a water sign just because of the name definitely how you know it leads into pisces season aquarius is almost you know bringing the water to the fish um any anyway <laughs> um you know, you can't you can't really ask for a more beautiful outcome for this whole situation uh, than the Queen of Cups. So whatever you need to get off your chest, whatever you need to confront your people over, whatever closet you need to come out of, 
um, whatever changes you need to make. I feel like whatever changes, I feel like your changes have already happened with the Ten of Swords and, and the Moon down here. And, you know, but if you need to wrap up any changes, they're going to be wrapping up really quickly. Um, but this is all going to work out and you're going to find yourself sitting, you know, sitting on the pier, dangling your feet in the ocean, looking out at the sunset or the sunrise if you're on an East Coast. <laughs> so I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, that's all I'm seeing for you guys. And uh, just just keep keep a new moon in Aquarius. Bring love into this situation. Remember that. And watch for the new moon in Aquarius. It'll be coming. And the Queen of Cups, you know, when you're going through those those struggles, think back to, to these two cards. Just, just keep them in mind. They'll kind of, you know, remind you what energies to be focusing on as you move forward. And that is the end of this video. Um... Please, please leave me a comment if this resonated with you at all. This is a new project for me, and I would love to hear uh, from you guys while I try to build this channel and get this um, project going. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope to be able to keep doing it. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.